Well, my body lies over the ocean. My body lies over the sea. My body lies over the ocean. Oh, bring back my body to me. My name is Travis Allison. I'm here with our host, Scott Arizella. Hey, Scott, how's it going? Good, Travis. Thanks. Thanks so much for hosting once again. Uh, hey, today we were going to continue the staff training series that we started. Uh, and this time we wanted to talk a little bit about time management. Uh, this is really a, a part two to, the, uh, to one of our previous episodes that we did on staff training uh, titled uh, More With Less. And, uh, this really gets down into the idea of how can we use the time that we have uh, most appropriately and, and really be able to teach effectively in those, in those times. Um, so I was thinking a lot about this particular episode and how I wanted to start, start, uh, start it. And I, it dawned on me, I, I, I've been telling um, a sort of series of stories in some of my trainings and my workshops over the last few years. Uh, that had to do with um, instructions and directions and sort of expectations and how you do that when you're working with a bunch of kids. Uh, and it, it, part of the story talks about uh, a counselor who was um, basically doing candle making at Arts and Crafts and, and she was really having a, what I would call a really rough time doing the rules. I mean, she really got up and was like, you know, don't do this, don't do that. I mean, she literally had this rule chart where she was going over all the things not to do. And um, she literally spent probably 10 minutes going over the rules and it was, you know, don't put your hands in the hot wax and don't mix the colors and, you know, no horseplay and so on and so forth, going down all these rules. And um, what was so funny to me uh, is that not, not only was this obviously not, not the way I want anybody to do rules or whatever, uh, and I am sure Travis and I will circle back, back around at some point and do a, an episode specifically on generating rules and instructions and directions and expectations. Uh, but it was the it was the sort of last piece that I found so interesting is that you know basically watching this whole thing happen in arts and crafts, standing at the back of the room with like a bunch of kids in front of me, all kind of paying attention to what she was what she was doing, and she goes through this whole rigmarole about everything you're not supposed to do, all the quote unquote rules, and uh, I have two kids standing right in front of me. And right at the end, uh, she says, okay, great, uh, you know, does anybody, uh, well, actually the question she asked, which is really funny, she says, uh, does anybody not get it? Right. Right, you know, it's like, who responds to questions like that? But at any rate, she then says, okay, let's do it. And there's two kids right in front of me, and one kid leans over to his friend and goes, so wait, what do we do? <laughs> it was the perfect example of time management and training or teaching, right? It's like, it was a waste of time. It, it was a straight up waste of time for her to go through all these really ineffective ways of teaching, quote unquote, teaching kids or in, in the framework that we're going to be talking about, training people in a, in a way that they're not going to get it, they're not going to understand anyways. Uh, so it, 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 it's the where I sort of wanted to start because you know, staff training, our, our time is so limited in staff training that we have this feeling and this tendency to sort of push everything we can into these few hours before, before the kids come. Uh, and frankly, it can be really ineffective, you know, getting them up at 7 o'clock in the morning, running them all day long until 11 o'clock at night, just because you have the hours in the day doesn't mean we necessarily need to do it like that. And on top of it, when we just start pushing stuff into their brain, sure, there is definitely stuff at camp where we want to say, it's not okay to do this and don't do that, but just pushing stuff into the brain is just, you know, it's not going to work and it's not using their, their time, your time really effectively. I, I love that, Scott. And the um, one thing that we did in ours, and I'm, I'm excited to hear your scenarios, but one thing that we did is we had one, one 45 minute only session that was bottom line stuff for us. And it was called How to Get Fired. 
and that was just like we've taught you lots of soft skills and and ways to work with your kids and be good teammates and communicate but these are the bottom line things for us this will get you fired this will go on your record as a first you know a first trip to the office three with you know small three small things would get you or three medium things would get you fired but yeah yeah we just made it called how to get you how to get fired and um, uh, we did two things. We did like a Jeopardy slash kind of like high school debate with our policies and procedures. So some of them were just questions, right, where you send a, you send a person up on stage and everyone had to like answer and whoever answered the fastest on what the, the policy was, which is exactly like what you're talking about, Travis, like, is it okay, to, you know, to, to drink alcohol on camp? Right, you know, whoever could answer it the fastest, the, the questions were a little harder than that. Uh, but there was also then we had um, we had some some debate style questions where two or three people from each team uh, had to come up and you had to basically for for or against this particular policy, and then you had to like make an argument out in front of everybody why this policy was important or why we, you know, why we should disregard this policy. And what was really interesting in that moment is, sure, it spent, you know, we spent a couple of hours uh, in one evening uh, talking about our policies and procedures. But two things happened that I, I was really thrilled with. One, all of our staff got to understand like the feeling of an evening activity, what it's like to be in a different group other than your primary group, what it's like to go to a big two hour event and sort of keep things moving, right? How do you even like, you know, all the different roles, right? Somebody has to be the MC, all the sort of legwork that you've got to put behind creating an evening, uh, an evening activity or, or an all camp activity. But the, the other piece that was so important for me anyways was the effective use of our time when it came to actually delivering our policies and procedures. You know, here we had, you know, my 19, 20 year old staff members actually like debating particular policies. Um, and some of them were funny, like we had like the drug policy, right, and to have like, you know, young people stand up and really advocate why you all should be doing drugs at camp versus why it's probably not okay to do drugs at camp was obviously funny to listen to. But then there was, you know, smaller things or relatively smaller things, being on time and so on and so forth that are policies but not necessarily like written these are the things you're going to get fired for so it was really an interesting way to do that and it does speak back to time management i love your example too travis of like we're going to just pull out these things and this is going to be a half an hour or 40 minutes of like boom 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 here are all the all the rules quote unquote to what's going on yeah and it was really just to illustrate the absolutes I, I mean, the, the creative ways to, to get people to comprehend and, and come up with a different method of teaching things, I, I totally endorse. This was just for the, uh, the, you need to know our absolutes. And so they're totally clear. You know, there's lots of other things that I think we can do during staff training that speak to this kind of stuff. And whether, you know, you spoke about it before, whether we're talking about the soft skills that you like to teach during training, um, you know, some of these absolutes or some of the policies, and policies, some of the procedures of camp. How do you do certain things? What does this time look like? How do we do meals? How, how do, what is arts and crafts like when you go there? Um, some of the interpersonal stuff, like how do you deal with homesickness or behavior management or so on and so forth. Like all these really important things. I think there are really creative ways to do it. Uh, you know, I think we get stuck a lot of the times in, um, you know, well, let me stand up in front of everybody and for two hours just kind of tell everybody the best ways yes. to handle certain things, yeah. um, you know, which there is room for, you know, you as the camp director, you know, myself as a camp director, and you know, professional trainer, I mean, you would imagine like I would want to stand up and just tell my staff all this stuff, right? Uh, it's just not necessarily, again, effective teaching, but more importantly to the to the topic of this episode, it's not really, you know, good time management. Um, and what I always tell, uh, I think a good rule to follow, what I always tell, um, what I always tell camp directors is uh, we should be following the same sort of flow and uh, the same structure as what happens at camp. Would you ever take all the kids, put them, sit them down on the floor of the dining hall, 
and lecture for two hours. And, you know, invariably every, you know, camp director says no. So, well, why do you do it to your staff? Well, because it's important and I need to tell them all these things. Well, of course you need to tell them all those things. And I want you to figure out a structure that looks more like camp. Uh, this is where this is where an idea of the experiential training schedule comes into play. You know, I can't tell you how many years in a row I I tried to tell people what the schedule was like. I would have a whole session, an hour long session in my training that was talking about the schedule, and I finally realized, well, this is the most ridiculous use of an hour that there is, right? <laughs> They're never going to understand it anyways until they actually go and do it. And so instead, we sort of reworked it so that the entire week of staff training or three days of staff training now at Dragonfly, we actually just operate on the daily camp schedule. We get up at the same time. We have meals at the same time. Our activity periods are the same length of time. The transition periods are the same length of time. All those kinds of things to the point where we're trying to break down our activity periods the same way we expect program leaders or, or counselors to break down activities, right? We don't want more than about five or ten minutes of instruction before kids are doing something with the activity. It's really tough when it comes to like, well, we've got lots of things to talk about when it comes to homesickness or uh, recognizing child abuse or whatever. Sure, absolutely, and there are some topics that are way harder to do role plays or have some sort of activity based thing or whatever but those are really important ideas and I think we need to use uh, sort of that idea of, uh, of an experiential schedule to do some inherent teaching but also to be more again effective with our time. Three Adventures International Camp Staff. Three things you should know about Three Adventures. One. Our owners are all former camp directors. Two, we're a high quality company that's easy on your budget. Three, background checks. Our international camp staff come from all over the world and every one of them has had a background check. No exceptions, no excuses. Threeadventures.com, the site to get great camps connected with great staff. What are some great ways, Scott, to get across those important things? Like, what do you use to manage the time as effectively as possible? You've talked about modeling the schedule and some games, game shows, so different things. What other stuff do you do? Uh, I do a lot of activities. Uh, during each, you know, I really push on my, my directors personally, as well as the training that I do at other camps. I try to do a lot of activities, whether those are quick two, three minutes stand up, and you know, get a partner and do something, whether those are longer, more drawn out, um, you know, team building ex exercises, or a number, of, I do a number of different sort of drawing activities, uh, writing, like individual or group writing activities, things that can um, access, access the content in a different way for individuals. Uh, I also use a lot of small group discussion uh, you know, a lot of times you'll be in a training, you'll talk for 10 minutes and then want, you know, people to interact about it, like ask questions or, you know, give anecdotes or whatever. I find that if you break people down into two, three, four, uh, you know, kind of small groups, give them an opportunity to talk about it, then come back to the large group, a lot of people are more apt to have a discussion. Uh, you're always going to end up with the same sort of 5, 10, 15 people who are willing to kind of raise their hand and talk in a training session, but at least now you know the other 50 or so were able to spend some time thinking about it. So I do a lot of activities like that. Um, I'm also a real big fan of breaking things up with, uh, with just recreational games. Uh, you know, the quick, okay, everyone, let's go outside for five minutes. Uh, you know, Carrie's going to teach you how to do X, Y, or Z game. Uh, and then we'll come back and we'll, we'll, we'll kind of get going again. Uh, breaks it up a little bit, gets people moving around, gets the blood flowing a little bit. You can kind of uh, steer them away from that sort of droopy look that people start having, you know, uh, during training sessions. And, and I, I just think it's more effective uh, as far as some of the, the, the training or the teaching. Um, one of the other things that I want you to think about when it comes to time management uh, you know, in one of our previous episodes, we talked a lot about what are some of the goals of each training session. 
uh, and I talked about um, a guy named Dr. Randall Grayson who had put together this idea around you want to be affecting basically three things during training sessions. Their knowledge, their behavior, and their attitude or their buy-in. Uh, one of the things that I want you to think about is how do your staff spend their time at camp with kids based on your training session, right? So a lot of that's like in the, these three things, right? What do they know? How, what are they doing? How are they behaving? Or, or what do they sort of feel as, as the, why we're doing this? What's their attitude about it? Uh, this sort of brings up an idea that I want to share with you about how you can kind of plot uh, the time. And, and this, I think, is, is incredibly true for directors and for supervisors, I think, but also maybe true for a lot of staff. Um, I learned this from my, from my wife, who uh, is, is now Dr. Arizala. She just finished her PhD in counseling psychology uh, a year ago. And during grad school, uh, she, during the active part of her grad school, she was in classes, uh, she learned this, um, uh, the, 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 she was introduced to this grid uh, that I thought was a really kind of cool um, a visual for how we spend our time. And it was a grid like this, sort of broken up into four, four quadrants, uh, and uh, we'll be showing you a graphic of this. And across the middle, the, the middle uh, axis uh, was urgency, and on one side was things that are super urgent, and on the other side was things that were not so urgent. And along this y-axis, the up and down axis, there were things that were important and things that were not so important. And basically, you know, you have these four quadrants that you can plot you, the stuff that you do. And what's really interesting is at camp, a lot of things end up in, uh, let me see, in this quadrant down here, right? In quadrant, in the quadrant that things are happening that in a really urgent way, but not so important, right? Now, unfortunately, I will say unfortunately, because they're oftentimes not really a good thing, we end up doing stuff over here, right? Where we end up in this quadrant of things that are really important and really urgent. Now, these are, you know, these are medical emergencies, these are, this is inclement weather. This is stuff that happens at camp that of course we can't avoid, right? And we have to handle it, right? What, what we really want, what we really want to be doing, and I think this is both for us as well as for our staff, is we want to be over here. We want to be doing stuff that's really important, but not in an urgent way. We want to be doing things in a measured, you know, sort of methodical way, right? Which means we're thinking ahead, we're planning ahead, we're doing things in a way that allows for some time to be thinking. And unfortunately, camp just isn't, the culture of a lot of camp doesn't lend itself to be doing things in a non-urgent way. And so the trick with understanding this graphic uh, and, and this sort of, these, these sort of quadrants is how can we train our staff so that we're constantly sort of shifting everything into this quadrant, right? And of course, I, this goes without saying, but we of course want to avoid what's down here, right? We want to avoid the not urgent and not important category, right? Unfortunately, some of that stuff happens at camp too, but how do we shift everything into this direction, right? So, how do we do that? For staff, we're going to train specifically in talking about sort of what are emergencies and what aren't. Right? We're going to talk specifically about, our, obviously, our emergency procedures, but then we, you mentioned earlier some of the so soft skills and communication and things like that. How do we communicate what's, what's important and how do we prioritize our time? Right? We only have so much time during a given hour, during a given day, during a week session at camp. How do we prioritize what's important? How do we push stuff into this? These are the important things that we're doing. We're just not handling them as if everything is a crisis. Um, just a really interesting way to think about some of the things that we do at camp, both for us and how we role model this stuff as well as, uh, as for our staff. Well, it's a, good, it's a good tool to give to your staff because it gives them uh, you know, a method for deciding what's valuable. We, we've been trying to adopt in our own house, we've been trying to adopt a, a hell yes or no policy. So when we're trying to decide if things, if we want to get involved in projects or we want to buy something or all that, it has to fit into one of those two quadrants. It's either hell yes or it's no. 
Yeah. <laughs> I like that, and it, it, it's an, an enthusiastic affirmation, or no. <laughs> no, I like that, and, and again, it's that same idea, right? It's, it's sort of like figuring out where things go, and uh, I do like the graphic because um, it provides you the, word, the, the sort of language to slow things down a little bit. And you know, you can actually talk to staff when they're coming to you, and they're all frenetic and, and friend, you know, frenzied about whatever. You can sort of pump the brakes a little bit and say, is this really urgent or no? You know, if it is, okay, let's deal with it. Where does this sort of fall as far as priority, importance? Of course, everything is important. Of course, what you're upset about or whatever is important, but is this like a right now important? Or is it like, yeah, we, let's get through dinner and then when we've got a half an hour of downtime, we can kind of come back and talk a little bit more about this. It gives staff, directors, supervisors, the language to prioritize and slow things down a little bit. We're, we're, you know, I think if you're watching this episode, it's sort of starting to get bigger than to just staff training and time management. But of course, that's where it all starts, right? I mean, this is when you start the sort of pace and and the energy and the uh, the role modeling of what's going to be happening for some of us only two or three weeks, for others of you, you know, eight, ten weeks of the summer. And the reality is is that, you know, uh, if we don't sort of pace ourselves, uh, if we don't really take care to think about the time, one, we're not going to get through what we want to get through during staff training, and we're going to go into first session feeling like our staff isn't trained well enough, but two, we're going to be on a pace that could potentially, we could all end up burning out over the course of the summer. We're going to talk a little bit more about that uh, in a different episode. So, um, again, I mean, it's obviously part of this whole package of staff training, um, what we talked about in a previous episode and this one, but you as a director need to feel comfortable with what you've been putting into your staff, what you've been giving them in the staff, that they get it. And you need to have a way of evaluating that. How do you sort of review what you've covered and, and make sure that you know that they've got it right? Sure. A uh, couple things. Well, one of the things that I really love to do, well, there's sort of two things in this idea of review. Uh, review, reflection, whatever. One, I love doing journaling uh, and small group discussion and, and utilizing our meals. Um, so we all, uh, we build in time. This is going to sound crazy to every camp director out there. We actually build in time to rest and reflect where we're not actually doing anything. Where if you look at the schedule, there's like free time during our, our, our training and what they are uh, sort of tasked to do during that, that time is one, either do some journal writing where we'll have very specific questions about what we've been talking about or two, we have small group discussion time where they, again, will they have some very specific questions that they are supposed to be dealing with. Um, Part of that idea is we will plant questions at meals where we just throw down three or four questions per table uh, about that just reflect on what's been happening over the last day, over the last morning, whatever it is. Uh, and again, we don't, you know, we're not taskmasters about this. We don't go around and check at each table to make sure they're discussing what's going on. But the reality is, I will tell you, 80, 90 percent of the time you get a, a group of random folks, they are talking about whatever the question is because they know to look there and they know that this is part of a review and, and reflection time. The other thing that I think people uh, really need to pay attention to is their sort of use of uh, case studies, scenarios, and role plays. Uh, I love this kind of stuff because uh, one that's really good teaching, you know, you can kind of stand up and talk a lot and then say, does everybody get it? And everyone kind of nods their head, right? Assuming that everyone gets it. You put people in a scenario, you put them in front of everybody else trying to act it out. And it's pretty clear that people don't really get it. Uh, you know, you can do this a lot with behavior and you can watch how people, the, the counselor, right, in the scenario kind of just falls back into their own mode of asking questions and whatever and doesn't really reflect on what you just talked about for like five or ten minutes as far as a strategy or technique or a principle. Uh, so it's really interesting uh, to use that. I like to use those things as a way of reflection and I think one of the pieces that you can add that makes role plays and scenarios and case studies like that really interesting and uh, sort of makes for maybe a more rich discussion 
um, is I never have, I never give a scenario and just say, okay, stand up and sort of act it out and then we'll all talk about it. What I say is I give a role player scenario and then I say, I want you to do it two different ways. The first way is going to be a really unskilled way. And the second way is going to be like a really a much more skilled way, a, a way that Root sort of uses or reflects back on the, these ideas that we're talking about. And it gets the, the group really thinking in terms of there's some not so good ways to do this and some better ways to do this. And so they highlight those things. And then, of course, the group has something more to discuss. And I open it up to the whole group and I say, what did you see that you liked and you didn't like? Uh, and it, it's just, it makes for a richer, richer discussion, but it also helps them reflect and review a little bit more sort of the, the ideas that we were, we were just discussing in the, in the training session. And it gives them who have bad habits um, a chance to say, oh, what I'm doing fits into the not so good side. That's right. And That's right. No, that's exactly right. And people see themselves all the time. And, you know, of course, it's fun, too. It, you know, sort of lightens it up when, you know, when you're doing a behavior scenario and, and a counselor comes out and just, like, smacks the kid around or just screams at the top of their lungs. I mean, obviously, these are things that are not okay. But to see that acted out, it sort of, you know, it lightens everything up and whatever. So it's it's really, it's a, it, it injects some fun as well, which I think is, is you know, obviously, it's important to to you know, be able to keep young people going sort of over the course of a day to, to let them do uh, those kinds of things too. It, 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 it makes for better, better, better teaching, better learning. That's great. Um, Scott, do you have any final thoughts on the topic? I mean, yeah, you know, it's really, you know, it's not about, in my opinion, it's just not about how many sort of hours we can squish into the day. It's really about what you're doing with those hours. I mean, that, that, that's, it's more important, in my opinion, to use the time that we do have in a really quality way and give our young, our young people, our, our staff, more downtime and more time to relax and more time to just bond and, and, and hang out with each other uh, than it necessarily is to sort of squish everything and you know, squeeze everything into, into the few hours that we do have. Okay. Well, thanks, Scott, for, for teaching us about time management as it relates to stop training. That's brilliant. My pleasure. Thank you very much, Travis. Uh, for more information on uh, me and what I do, please check me out at thecampcouncillor.com. Uh, and thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next summer. Well, my bye.